This is Just a Few Questions from Chicago. I'm Mark Sims, and I have Sergio Mims on the line from Chicago. You're from High Park, aren't you? You live in High Park somewhere, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, man, we were talking earlier. I, I, we can't record our conversations off the phone. I mean, while we're not online, but this thing is bothering me, Sergio. It really is because right as of right now, I'm not working. The city's on Chicago's on shutdown, and if we don't get this, I'm, I'm with President Trump on this one. We don't go back to work very soon. <laughs> we may have a, a economic depression in this country. What do you think? Well, yes, that's true. If we're not in one already, which I think we are. Number two is that... Oh, not recession, depression. Week, Keep going. Yeah. I think starting next week, um, I think you're going to start seeing more and more people on the streets because this is America. You can't tell Americans what to do. You really can't. Uh, Americans don't like to be told what to do. Now, they'll go along with something as long as it's not inconvenient for them, and they think that, you know, they're doing something good. But there's going to come a point in time where people are going to say, you know what, I'm tired of this, i got to go out. This is not Japan, this is not China, this is not Germany. You know, we're, we're Americans. We like to do what we want to do. And I think it's going to be very, very hard for any sort of stay in order to place. Now, I heard recently some talk that Pritzker, Governor Pritzker, will extend the uh, stay-at-home order for another week to April 14th. I even heard some rumors that he may extend it to uh, mid-May. That's impossible. There's no way he can no do that. No way. Well, he can do it. Yeah. No, but nobody's going to pay attention to it. No, not maybe in New York City, but uh, other parts of the country, and maybe in Chicago. No, you have riots in the streets because right. pe- because people they, they need some money. I don't know when I don't know how much money I'm going to get, and my little check from the government. I got to work on that to start getting that to, uh, tomorrow, and uh, it's not enough. It's just not no. enough. And right, and it's a disconnect. Right, he's a, he's a multi billionaire. He comes from one of the richest families in the country. Uh, does he really understand now? Let me say that I think he and Mayor Lightfoot have really done an excellent job. You're talking about uh, Governor Prisco? Considering the, cir- the circumstances. You're they have about, really done an excellent job. You're talking about uh, uh, Governor J.B. Prisker and Lori Lightfoot, the Mayor of Chicago, Governor of Illinois, right? Right. I, I think they have done an excellent job. But, you know, you can't push it. Uh, you can only do as much as what people will allow you to do. And even though Pritzker may say he could extend the stay-at-home order and um, Roy Lightfoot can keep the parks closed, um, it's, that, that order is not going to last. People are going to start breaking it. Yeah, well, it has to be a stagger thing. That's why, I mean, uh, some people don't like what Trump is doing, President Trump is doing, but he wants to get the economy back because he doesn't want to lose in, in, in uh, November. We'll talk about him, Biden and then Trump later on in a minute. But the thing about it is that I understand what Trump is doing. I get it. But we, we have to sort of stagger or slowly ease back into this new, a new normal where we're all wearing masks or we're keeping our social distancing. We're not talking so much, but we're slowly going back to work. Uh, the restaurants may be totally, totally full, but maybe you have a few people in the restaurants, a few people in the bar, and slowly ease back because the virus ain't going away. You know what I'm saying? We just had to boost our immune systems, and the people who are really in danger need to stay at home. What do you think, Sergio? Well, the virus, what would happen to the virus is what happened to all viruses, all previous plagues. They mutate into a harmless virus. That's what's always happened in the past. It happened in 1918, happened in the late 50s, happened in uh, 1968, 1969 with the Hong Kong flu. Um, they mutate into just another, you know, influenza flu. And at some the point, we're going to have some herd. We're going to have some kind of herd immunity, right? Herd immunity at some point, right? And then herd immunity, right? That's true. That's something they were trying to push in England, but after. Uh, the uh, prime minister 
Boris Johnson revealed that he was positive for the coronavirus. Uh, they kind of dropped that idea. Herd mentality basically said that you keep everybody together, they will form a natural immunity. So if everybody has it, then nobody has it. Yeah, I mean, and her, that's what going to happen. We're going to have de- first in we're gonna, we're gonna have deaths, a lot of deaths. I understand it could be you know, 150, 200,000 people in the States, but we're going to develop a herd immunity at some point. That's what the experts say, right? Okay, let's talk about your buddy Joe Biden. Our friend Benny J, Ben Javarsky, is worried about, or he sounds worried on his podcast, Benny J's podcast. He sounds worried about Joe Biden not being, I can't even say the, I can't even say the term, non-compos, non-compos mentos. <laughs> or he is non-compos mentos. <laughs> He's not a sound mind. He may not be uh, ready to take the presidency in next year, so we may have to get somebody else. What do you think, Sergio? Well, look, uh, Joe Biden is not as sharp as he was a couple of years ago, you know, comes of age. Uh, but still, and people talk about, <laughs> <coughs> sorry, folks, I do not have the virus. Okay. Let me you know. You. And Joe Biden, um, um, in terms of his gaffes. Uh, well, look, we just spent the last four years listening to somebody make stupid gas and say stupid things. So how's that any different? Yeah, but you I do. The you, thing about it is that I think the thing about it is that I think people just want just want something to calm down. We have been through four years. We have been through four years of madness and chaos, and I think people just want everything just to calm down. Can we just have a break? And I think that's what people are looking for. People are just looking for a break. So Sleepy so Joe, people, Sleepy Joe yeah. could be refreshing, right? Sleepy Joe. Yeah, I think people, um, people just want um, some quiet time, and I think that's what Joe Biden promises: some quiet time, away from this daily madness. I mean, here's a guy who today tweeted that. Um, his ratings for his news conferences are the best ratings ever. And I go like, what, what kind of self-centered idiot <laughs> that we have this crisis going on and you're concerned about the ratings <laughs> for your press conferences? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Let's, you know, let's, people go, are, <laughs> let's go back to Joe Biden. I can talk about Trump forever. Uh, the key yeah. is that who he's going to pick for vice for vice president because vice president. Well, I keep changing he, my mind. Okay? But no, but that I vice president could be become pre, could become president in about a year or two. Yeah, originally I yeah. said uh, my prediction. Well, I I I, I thought I, I said it would be great if he got Warren, but he's not going to pick Warren. My pick originally was Gretchen Wilmer, who is the mayor of Michigan and a big Biden supporter. You governor, right? Then I switched and I said, you know what, who would be a better choice may be Tammy Duckworth because she checks all your boxes. Mm -hmm. She's a woman of color. She's a moderate. She's on the Midwest. She's a wounded Iraq war veteran. But now I'm beginning to switch back to Wilner, basically because she and Trump have been at each other since this whole crisis began. Well, she's doing a lot of TV. She's doing a lot of TV. Wow, she's doing a lot right. of TV. Well, how, I don't even know how to because pronounce because her name. It's first, Whit- Whitmer, right? Something like that, right? The right. governor, Whitmer? Richard Whitner. Okay. Whit- Whitner, okay, right? Something like that. Trump already has a nickname for her. He calls her Half Whitner. Get it? Like Half Whitner? Oh, like a Half Whitner. Yeah. So, but then, but you're thinking to yourself, oh, maybe that's what he needs. He needs someone who's tough, who can go up against Trump. Um, yeah, Tammy Duckworth would do it, but the more of Gretchen Whitner, Whitner and the back and forth she's been going with Trump has made her, to, in my eyes, more attractive again. So maybe I'm leaning back to Gretchen Whitner, Whitner well, she, yeah. being his vice presidential candidate. Well, she's doing a lot of t- she's doing a lot of TV, but uh, if if yeah. if uh, Joe Biden. Um, has a uh, you know some health issues uh, or doesn't do so well in the pro- in the uh, debates later this year, uh, you know there you hear people crying for uh, for Governor Cuomo or Governor Pritzker <laughs> to step in and take the nomination. Well, you know, here's the thing: it's too late now, but everybody's talking about boy if Andrew Cuomo was our presidential candidate. I mean, he would have been 
it would have been a lockstep. He's in. Uh, but, you know, he didn't run. It's politics. Um, being mayor of New York is tough enough already. Governor. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, know, what you, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's governor of New York. It's a tough enough job already. Uh, unlike um, Bill de Blasio, yeah. who's been dis- the mayor of New York, who's been disastrous during this whole situation, as bad as Trump. You know, you want somebody who's clear-eyed and honest and tells you the truth, like a Cuomo, or like a Governor Pritzker, or like a Lori Lightfoot. You know, it's when local politicians or state politicians step up to the gate because you're not getting leadership from the top, which is a sad state of affairs. I could talk about this coronavirus forever, but let me end, let me end this podcast by talking about this. I want... Any official, anybody in charge, state governor or whatever, or you know, the mayor of a city, to talk about boosting your immune system. They are people who have compromised underlying health conditions and all that kind of stuff. We know that. A lot of people on drugs, and a lot of drugs uh, give you, uh, uh, they weaken your immune system. A lot of pharmaceuticals do weaken your immune systems. How, why don't we hear more about that in the, during this coronavirus? Boost, improve because your health. Because the pharmaceutical companies are too powerful. It, w- it would be great. If Anthony Fauci said, hey, what, in the meantime, folks, take plenty of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. Zinc is very important. I take those four vitamins myself every day. I've been taking zinc for a long time um, to boost your immune systems. That would be great. Why don't they do it? It's because they're too much in the pockets of the pharmaceutical companies. I just mentioned earlier about this drug that Trump mentioned, and also Andrew Cuomo has mentioned and said he wants to see being used, and Fauci shot it down. Well, Cuomo said, to hell with that. Starting this week, they're going to start giving people this antimalarial drug because they have seen results in people in individual cases and in other countries. So why is Fauci so interested in saying, oh, shooting it down, we need more tests, time's wasting, let's go now. Yeah, but th- what we're going to have, they're gonna, in this country and around the world, we're gonna, they're going to have a sh- flu shot, a coronavirus shot, if you will, and the flu shot, or maybe a prescription you're going to have to go to your local drugstore to get later this year, and definitely next year, because I'm not, I'm not against pharmaceuticals. But this country and the world likes to push pharmaceutical solutions. Of course, you know, which is quite sad. Um, Or do what happened? Do what happens? What they do in Rwanda? You know, Rwanda. There hasn't been a single case of the coronavirus, and the reason why. And this was on the BBC. The reason why is because there's an edict to make everybody wash their hands. They put sinks everywhere, in the streets, everywhere. Everybody wash your hands. When you go on a bus, when you go on a train, when you enter a building, any large facility, wash your hands. And there hasn't been a single case of coronavirus since then. All right, Sergio, Sergio yeah, Mills, uh, you are the co-founder of the Black Harvest Film Festival here in, Festival here in Chicago. I cannot thank you enough. Uh, come on back and talk about this uh, coronavirus. Hopefully we'll start going to a, a new normal in the next week or so. And take, but please take good care of your health. Thanks, Sergio. Yeah, sure.